man, got around. OG Self back here. And today, I have tales of victory and glory as we demonstrate how to live by beast mode law because of adapting a savage mindset, viewing everything as a barbaric barbarism. Hey guys, I wanna get straight into the topic here today. And the reason this topic came up guys, you know, here in California, they lifted the COVID-19 restrictions, which means that the gyms are open, the dojos are open, the parks are open. Those are the three main places I really care about. Why? Because in the gym, I can do more things than I can do here in my apartment because even though I got a weight set here, the neighbors complain when I drop the weights. You know, sometimes you drop the weights. I try not to, but sometimes if you're going to failure, the weights slip, you know what I mean? And then they drop on the floor, you know, or if you're even doing reps, you're not in complete control. Also, uh, you know, the gym has more equipment. I'm going to be making some videos straight from the gym guys showing you my exercises and what I believe are really good overall synergistic exercises. Uh, number two, the dojos is because during this whole COVID-19 thing, we had to be sneaking in the parks, man, and working out in alleys in the back of buildings. It was kind of a creepy thing, but you got to do what you got to do. And then the parks, dude, it's important because here in, in the central California where I live at, we have parks that actually go into mountains or down into beaches or into forests. So you can really get some beast mode training where some animals will actually come out. So what happens, guys, is I was talking to some of my martial arts buddies that I haven't trained with in a while because it was just a select few that wanted that felt safe to train during the COVID, which I respect, man. And we were talking about the excitement of going back into the dojos. And so then the conversation came up of like, you know, men and women and equality. And it came up in the, in the process of training because in most dojos, when you go in, they line you up by height and weight. And so normally, you know, women are smaller type human beings. There are some taller women, bigger women, but in the dojos where I train it, they don't have them roll with the men. They have them roll with the women. It's just the way it is. And so I got to thinking about it because I was in one dojo and there was a lady who had multiple black belts and she was my uh, martial arts instructor. And during the demonstrations, it was actually in Aikido. And she would whisper in my ear, hey, let me throw you. And when I grew up boxing and wrestling and doing Kenpo Karate, man, and this year group karate, taekwondo, striking sports, uh, there was no let me throw. You would get thrown or you'd get hit. You'd, you'd take the punch, right? So I was like, and it just struck me as weird. So anyway, we got to talking about that, man. And that's when I came up with this, the, the name of this video. It says, um, are men and women really equal? The hypocrisy of the feminist female hero. So let me tell you why I came up with this topic, guys, because I just want to first off say that in my belief, men and women are equal in, the, in rights, dude. They have a right to do whatever men do. They're equal in the ability to get education. None of this, you know, good old boy thing where women had to stay home and be barefoot and pregnant. You know, women should go to be able to go to school and do or take whatever they want, whatever career field they choose. And of course, under the eyes of God, man, women or men are equal. I mean, we're human beings. We're creatures of God, right? Whether you believe in aliens, you're an atheist or whatever, I'm just speaking of on a humanistic level, dude, we are equal, bro. And women should have the right you know, the, the option to do whatever they choose in this life. I'm going to tone my voice down. And so when this video, I don't want you to think I'm talking about all women because I'm not, because, you know, just like anybody makes a statement about all men or all dogs or all animals or all trees or all flowers or all whatever. When you say all, I, I, in my opinion, it shows that you're ignorant because you can't say all of it. Nothing in this life is either on or off, there's various shades of gray, which I've made many videos about. And I also wanna say that, dude, I absolutely love women, I adore women. I think that they're awesome, but in their lane. And I wanted to say in their place, but then that's gonna, maybe that's gonna flag me or get YouTube all up in the roar like it's a hate speech, but I'm saying in their lane. In this life, we all have lanes, you know what I mean? You know, we have a lane for accountants and garbage men and lawyers and doctors and dentists, you know what I mean? Garbage collectors. And then you have a lane for savages and barbarians, right? 
It might be a small lane, but everybody has a lane. So once you remember that word, lane. So what I want to do, I'm going to talk about, I want to talk about speaking of staying in your lane. In this life, each of us has to determine, and the earlier you determine, the better. What lane, what's your specific lane? Like if you want to be an accountant, you should specialize in mathematics and logic and the theory of deduction and, you know, accounts payable, you know, accounts receivable, that kind of stuff. Like really focus on that. There's a book called First Know Your Strengths. And I think it's important to develop because each of us have an innate strength and talent. I think it's good to work on that. I also think it's good to work on your weak areas, right? But now I want to have a conversation about training with martial artists, man, and, and the equality of women, dude. Because this is how this whole thing started. So I just want to be honest with you, man. I think there's three types of martial arts that you can take, right? There is the true martial arts, man, which I call combative, like striking sports, man, where you're actually hitting, kicking, punching, slamming each other. Then I call it what's called theoretical martial arts, dude, where you say, oh, if this guy does this, then you should do this and you can do that. And then I call it hypothetical martial arts where they teach you some stuff that you will never use in a million years. So I want to concentrate on the first one because I encourage all of the guys that come to my channel or go to my Patreon to do combative striking types, contact type martial arts because that's the only way you're going to learn martial, which is the art of war, right? So we were talking about that because when you know with the proliferation of women being cage fighters and now women want to get into football in high school and college. I'm talking about American football, not soccer. And then they want to get into wrestling, dude, and they want to get into boxing and MMA and, and striking sports. I think they have a right to do that, man. They want to get into rugby. I think they have a right. But here's the whole thing I wanted to share with you guys. If, if men and women are equal in all areas, right, if we're really equal, then why is it they have female teams – and, and male teams, right? And that's just a hypothetical, you know, that's a rhetorical question because everybody's going to have their own answer, but here, here's my answer. Why is it that when there's a transgender dude who makes the transition because we're all about LBGTYQ, whatever that is, a, a, a guy feels like he's a woman trapped in a man's body. He goes through the actual transition of taking the hormones, the reconstructive surgery, the psychological counseling, and now he is identifies himself as a she. Why is there an uproar in female sports that oh this this thing should this person should not be able to compete with us? Why is that? But then if you if if it's a converse, if it's a woman who wants to become a man, I don't know if there's a surgery that could do that, but let's just say there was. I don't, the men wouldn't have a problem with that. So. I wanted to just say that because I wanted to point out there is a difference physically between men and women, just biologically on that level, there is a difference. There is a difference in not just the genitalia, but also some of the internal organs or brain size, um, our physiology, our hormones, right? A lot of chemical stuff that determines how your body functions, how you view the world, how you go about interacting with the world, right? So I just think it starts early in school because you got girls teams and boys teams. Then you got girls schools and boys schools. You got men's professions and women's professions. I'm going to give you an example. Even though our society is becoming more gender fluid, have you ever heard of a male nanny? Now, there's always going to be some trolls. Who, yeah, I've heard of male nanny, but I'm saying when you look at, when you hear the word nanny, it is the default. What comes to your mind is normally a lady. And have you ever heard of a female lumberjack? Now, I know there's women in construction and different things like that. But when you think of the word lumberjack, what's the default image that comes to your head without you thinking about it? It's that of a man. So I'm just saying. There's roles in society. And speaking of roles, the roles from early on in uncivilized times, barbaric times, which I wish I still lived in, and, and uh, was the male was the protector, the hunter-gatherer, and the woman was the nurturer. The guy would go out and kill, bring the meat back. The woman would prepare it and cook it and all that. Everybody had a role or lane, so to speak, if that's more of a friendly term for you. But see, in modern society, women have become more masculine. 
and men have become more feminine. And that's why they got the term bench warmer boy and soy boy because of the gender fluidity. But I want to show you guys what happens when, when the shiza hits the fan. Let me guys show you, show you guys this right here. I want to show you this. And this, I want to play this clip here for you. So you see the circle right here. This is a couple. And this is two young guys. I just want you to watch this really quick. There's no sound to it, but just watch what happens. It's showing he's got a knife right here. So they got the man and lady talking, you know, because women like like to be talked to. They like to talk and stuff. And the guy, he's so into his girlfriend, man, he's not really paying attention to these two young dudes walking down the street, right? Watch this. So they sp they scoping it out. Look, the woman's so emotional, you know, she's just being a woman, and they're arguing and stuff, right? Because, you know, women like drama. But watch this, guys. <laughs> it's not funny. I shouldn't laugh. I shouldn't, that's not funny. I don't I don't know what happened there. I'm just uh, something's wrong with me. So I just want to point this out. This guy is accosting the woman right here. And I'm just saying, guys, I'm not trying to be offensive or I'm not trying to be mean or cruel. But in my opinion, she's not handling her business, man. The dude, you know, the dude wants to take her purse. So the homeboy, her boyfriend has to come over to help out. So here's the dude with the knife right here. So I'm saying I'm not going to play this whole video because I don't want to get a copyright strike here, guys. I just wanted to, um, I just wanted to show you guys, uh, I just wanted to show you guys what I was talking about there. That the man had to take over the situation, and deal with that situation, right? And so now I want to show you this other one, man. I want to show you this other one really quick here, guys. Let me show you this other one. This is from my dude, Anthony Spade, and he's saying, why do girls act tough when really in reality they're not? I want to just listen to what he's got to say really quick. Everything link is in the description. Even the Red Pill mixtape link is in the description. Today we're going to be talking about how women mask their emotions to keep from looking weak and lazy, right? In today's world, what a lot of men do not understand about women is that 95% of the time women are lying. Majority of the red pill information that I give you is for only one of a woman's personality. Remember, a woman can also be alpha, she could be beta, she could be all these things as well because they're all mindsets. The only difference is she switches in and out of these mindsets. She's constantly turn changing She's constantly changing into different characters to hide another, all right? And today we're going to be talking about how she masks those characters. First, she pretends to be over a guy. Okay, guys, I wanna, I'm not going to play the whole thing. I want you guys to go over there. I'm going to put the links in the description. But I wanted to give you uh, different points of view on the topics that I'm talking about. But let me show you this one more here before, uh, before I wrap it up. This is from... Feminist female heroes. I want you to watch this, guys. I want you to watch this. Nice scuba suit. You need a ride, darling. So just to share with you guys, and I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be old-fashioned, old fogey. I'm not trying to be anti-woman. I'm just sharing with the evolution of our society. Back when I was growing up, 
You had the dude on the Harley Davidson with the motorcycle, the black leather jacket. He was called a bad boy. Um, back in the day, women would just love bad boys. They like when you're aggressive and assertive. And they like when you just talk to the woman and, and hit on the woman. I know that that's changed now. You can go to jail for that. But I'm just sharing with you how society has morphed over. And I just want you to see that he's the typical bad boy, macho guy that most women used to love back in the day. I don't know about it now, but just watch this, guys. How about a smile for me, huh? How about a handshake? <laughs> Here's a proposition for you. You're going to give me your jacket, your helmet, and your motorcycle, and in return, I'm going to let you keep your hand. Take it. Very stunning, very brave, really a person you can look up to. I mean, the guy had it coming because he was rude and asked her to smile. Wow. Of course she had to steal his bike and his clothes and then rob this innocent store's mannequin for the rest of her outfit. They deserved it. Uh, when feminists watch movies like this, do they not notice this stuff? Look at this article titled, Six Reasons Why We Love Captain Marvel. Carol's power isn't about feeling superior. She literally goes on a power trip and robs a guy because he was slightly rude. And that's not the only time she displays her power arrogantly. Okay, your turn. Prove you're not a scroll. <laughs> Is this what makes a hero now? She just destroyed that restaurant owner's property unprovoked. I Okay, guys, um, I think you got the gist of it. Like I said, I'm going to put the uh, the link to this video in the description as well. I just want to give you guys some, like, pointers, you know what I mean? And here's the last one I want to share with you guys really quick here, this one right here. I'm just going to make you a bit uncomfortable. When I was 16 years old, I was very ambitious, and I... I'm from the McDonald's generation. We want everything so fast. We want to be on social media. We want everybody to like us on Instagram. We want to be on Twitter. We want to just do everything so quick. I was working every And I share with you guys all the time, man, that's a female type of a behavior. You guys are on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok and all this stuff, dude. I'm just saying, when I was growing up, the boys were outside playing in the dirt and the mud and the rain and stuff, and, and they're getting bruised up, and the girls were in the house playing Barbie. The, the new addition of Barbie and Dollhouse is your phone, bro. That's all I'm saying. We are under the sun, and I said, I can't do this anymore. And I started hanging around with people that you shouldn't really hang around with, and I fell on the wayside. <laughs> And whatever I put my name on, I must respect. I must have the most respect for myself. I'm going to raise myself first. So all I'm pointing out to you guys, you see how the, the women can just change their looks based on the wig that they put on or the makeup that they put on or different things like that. You know what I mean? But then it's, it's equal because men can't really do that. Guys, we're literally getting spoiled today. Yeah. You look so pretty, though. Guys, look how stylish she is. She's got money. She's got businesses. So basically, guys, um, this is a video about a woman who actually bamboozles women, but under the guise of she's building them up to have their own businesses, be strong feminists, and to be take charge type of people. And I just wanted to share with you guys in this video that there's a psyop mind freak called the Matrix of Role Reversal. And dude, just over just over since the beginning of the time, women have been the best actors, bro. But don't fall, don't fall for thinking that men and women are equal in all areas. I think women's equality is good, women's rights are good. But at the end of the day, guys, I want you to come to this channel so you can understand what it means to be a man, to have your role, and to have that defined so you know what lane you're in and don't have society, the media, Instagram, TikTok, whoever have somebody switch you out of a lane that you're not supposed to be in and put you in another lane where you're wearing dresses and stuff. That's all I'm trying to say to you guys.